My stepmother just got me kicked out of the house for something I would never do in a million years, and she's scheming to take everything from my father, get me kicked out of the will, get me completely out of the picture so she can suck her claws into him and take him for everything that he has. My stepmother, Tori, fed my father lies, so he disowned me and took everything when he died. But now she's failing to run, and it's hard that she's practically forced to call me back to run everything. For context, Tori's been my stepmother ever since I was 13. She got married to my newly divorced father, and she's been like a mosquito in my ear ever since. Okay, that may sound harsh, but I tried, alright? I tried to get along with her, I was nice to her and listened to everything she said. But I was stopped by the time I was 15. I think the line was crossed for me when she threw a hissy fit at my mother's funeral. My mom was a policewoman who got shot during a mall shooting... I'd expected Tori to at least respect her at the funeral, but instead she made it all about herself. Well, my mother had nobody close because she was an orphan, so all that we had was us and her friends. I lost all my respect for Tori when she saw my father crying at the funeral after my eulogy and complained that he still loved his ex-wife. She was angry that we arranged for the funeral in the first place and that my father had no right to mourn someone he'd already lost ages ago. She threw a tantrum inside the church and dragged my father out while bawling her eyes out. From that day on, I simply stopped trying. If she wanted to treat me like crap and disrespect my mother, I was going to reciprocate that energy. But to be honest, I did not do anything. I just ignored her completely, never listened to a word that she had to say, and I even went on my way to do the opposite of what she would say. Even though she was right sometimes, I remember this one time specifically, when I was about 18, she'd organized this massive surprise party dinner for my father. Does this woman even know my dad? He hates parties and surprises. He would not want a party or a surprise. Tori had asked me to keep him out of the house until late evening, and I did as she told. After all, she knew I only wanted this absolute best for my dad, so I would not disobey or fight with her on this, but you know what I did? I took my dad's phone and took him out the entire day. I first took him to our favorite burger joint, then we watched a movie, and lastly, I took him bowling when we were supposed to get home for the party. We got home at 12 on the dot, and by the time everyone had gone home, it was just Tori there, crying. She raised her hand at me that day, and you know what? I know I sound like a complete brat, but Tori has always been mean to me, and I was just returning the favor. I hate her. She was rude to my friends, and now she's been rude to my wife, Nala. My wife is the smartest, rudest woman I know. She doesn't hold back, so whenever Tori says something, Nala claps back with energy. Well, you get the picture. Anyways, my dad was a cancer survivor, and he had cancer back when I was 10. My parents split around that time of his cure due to my mother's ambition. Two years ago, my father relapsed. To be honest, I'm surprised, but extremely happy he held out this long. This time around, though, the doctors weren't very positive about his chances for survival. Of course, she tried her level best to save him, but you know, it is what it is. Before my father passed away, Tori ensured that she'd get everything, not me. And for the past few years, I've been running my father's company. We deal with machines and electronics and have a sub that is in the service sector, providing repair services to all electronics and machines. I'm not going to name names, but the company's very old and doing very, very well. Well, not right now, but hey, we'll get to that later. My father had entrusted me with running the company after his second cancer diagnosis. I've been doing this completely alone, with minimal support from my father, and of course there are other directors, people older and wiser than me like Nala's father, to guide me and help me make important decisions. I've Always had everything I needed to run the company, and I've done it extremely well. Anyways, coming to why I've typed this post out. Tori planted drugs. Hard drugs, by the way. Not telling you guys which one due to the, well, sub-rules in my room. But we're talking uh, drugs, and I mean drugs. And my father has no tolerance policy when it comes to drugs and cigarettes. You take him, you lose all your respect and get the heck out of his house. And never show your face again. I've never been inclined to consume drugs. 
I've never been pressured into consuming drugs, and I've never associated with anyone who promotes drugs. Now, I'm not trying to be holier than thou. I've had friends who smoke or take recreational substances every now and again. I'm not judging. They can do whatever they want as long as it's not in my face. So yes, you can all guess how against drugs I am. I mean, against taking them. She left them here and there in places I would never look. I'm talking tiny little baggies that I would not spot unless I was actively looking for them. I didn't know there were substances in my room. I have a dog. What if something would have happened to her? I never would have left drugs in my room for a dog to eat and die. Obviously. No, but seriously, where did this woman even find the drugs? And if she found drugs, where did she find the audacity to place them in my room strategically? Well, I don't know how she pulled it off, but I'm assuming that she planted the seeds of doubt in my father's head. She probably said I smelt like grass or something like that. I honestly don't know what she told him, but he stormed into my room while I was on my laptop and starts furiously scrounging around in my room with what little energy he had left in him. Tori helped, and she was obviously the first person to find a baggie of pills. They eventually unearthed more, and all I could do was sit in silence, mouth wide open, while Tori sent me secretive subtle winks. Damn woman, next level evil type of crap. Anyways, when they're done empty in my entire room, they found 25 baggies. Must have cost a fortune to frame me. My dad dragged me by an arm, though very weak, but I followed him anyways, and he threw the tiny Ziploc pouches into the fireplace, expecting me to react, but I simply shrugged. <laughs> well, that really set him off. He started screaming at me about the dangers I was putting myself into, the money I was wasting, the life I was wasting, and how I had no sense of responsibility towards my family, how I had no fear of crime, and how I brought dirt into this house that belonged to his father, grandfather, and the land that belonged to generations before them. The list of bad things I did by consuming drugs just went on and on and on. I heard the whole thing out silently, but I lost my mind when he said that he was handing full control of the company to Tori, and trusted that she would just run it fine with the help of other board members, but even if she did not, he would rather have it crash and burn than see a vermin like me run it. He berated me, and forgot everything that I've done for him with him, and for him, I tried to deny it for so long, begging him to believe me, begging to let me take a drug test. I begged him to see that his only son would never bring drugs into this house. When I brought up the drug test, Tori chimed in saying that I had a heinous amount of drugs and that maybe I wasn't even taking it. But maybe I was doing something far worse. Then she accused me of dealing. My father was even more furious when he realized what Tori said and you know what? He agreed with her. My father, who I loved, who loved me for 28 years, reduced our relationship to nothing in that one instant. I was heartbroken. But obviously it did not end there. Tori got to assume full rights over the company, but my father also signed his will to her, giving her everything. Right then and there, he transferred enough money for me to survive for a year or two right into my account and told me that was all I was getting because he just felt a sense of duty towards me as his kid. I fought back, telling him that he's wrong, that Tori trapped me in this situation, but he simply shook his head and reminded me of my hateful history with Tori. He said that he did not expect me to ever stoop as low as to blame Tori for my disgusting habits and accuse her of such a gross crime. I knew then and there that my father was too far gone to ever even listen to me, so I gave up trying to fight his accusations. Now, I never admit to taking drugs, as that would be a fat lie but I simply backed down and just lowered my head. But the way my luck was going, I obviously never stood a chance. My father wasn't done with me just yet. He told me to take my wife and dog and leave the house forever and never to come back again. I protested, but to no avail, of course, because I got down on my knees and looked into his eyes, hoping he would look back and believe me. But he got into a coughing fit and told me between coughs and a hoarse voice to get the heck off his property. My wife was, you know, having her own house, so I packed her bags with essentials and took my dog and left. I explained the whole situation to Nala, who stormed out of the house to fight with Tori and get my father to believe me, 
but she was a few minutes too late. My father died by the time she reached there. He'd overexerted himself and his heart just gave out. I was quickly called by her and she was sobbing over the call so I could barely make out what she was saying, but I guessed anyways. We had a funeral for him where thankfully there were no fits or tantrums thrown by anyone. I didn't cry, Nala did not cry, Tori did not cry at the funeral, yet another eulogy to address a bunch of faces pretending to be ah, grieving by this loss. After the funeral, I cried. A whole lot. All this happened right on the day he passed away. If it had not happened, he would not have passed away, and the will was signed. Right before he could rest, I was stuck now, left with nothing but some money in the bank. And of course, my loving wife to support me. I was angry. I was so angry, I was barely in my senses. The last moment I had with my father was a fight and not a moment worth remembering let alone cherishing, and it was all because of my stepmother, Tori. I used to always hate her, but I never uh, was angry at her before this. She did not let me say goodbye to him, enjoy his presence one last time, be embraced one last time. Instead, he died hating me. He died being disappointed with me, and that hurt. I was in so much pain. I was grieving, but I was all alone because Nala had to work through it to support me after I lost my job. While I was reeling from the loss, Nala kept giving me updates on the situation in the office. You see, Nala and her father both own shares in the company, and they're both on the board of directors, making integral decisions and supporting the CEO, who is Tori right now. So I gave Nala instructions that she relayed as her suggestions to Tori. However, Tori was extremely disrespectful to Nala, and even hauled a racial slur at her in private. So instead, Nala provided her input in the board meetings that are conducted weekly. While I was in control, the company mostly ran itself, with the impressive management and workplace system my father had employed, and he had employees keeping the office running by itself. But somehow, some way, Tori's managing to screw that up too. So basically, Tori terminated the employment of the head of the design and development department, who's been working with our company for over two decades. 20 years of trust, of building relationships and working together just to be simply destroyed. She left crying and I heard from Nala. I truly am disappointed. This woman had dinner with us. This woman babysat my father when she was a teenager. And now she's gone? It truly is so heartbreaking to see. And all this because Tori thought she had an affair with my father. Of course it wasn't true and that wasn't the reason Tori gave for her termination. She claimed it was due to her subpar designs and low-grade equipment quality that was tarnishing our company's reputation. Now, no one loves the company more than I do. I'll call it bad as bad, but her work was so lovely efficient and near perfect. Tori just slipped in the thing about the alleged affair during their little spat, or we never would have actually known the real reason why she was removed. The company starts to lose money. It hurt me, but I was helpless. Nala and the other directors tried their hardest to take control of the downward spiral, but my stepmother, the tyrant, just ignored them and ran things how she assumed would be best. And it's not easy to do business if you don't know the business. Nala came home a week ago, telling me over dinner how there was this brand partnership meeting that I'd set up and how the deal was a complete and utter failure. Apparently, the deal was on, but it was hugely in the opposite party's favor, and there weren't equal benefits for us in the situation. I was confused as to how this could happen as I'd assigned another board member to finalize the deal with our legal team, but it turns out my stepmother did. How unfortunate, honestly. But that was weeks ago, and yesterday, Tori came crawling to me, begging to help her. She said that she was way over her head, and she kept getting more and more tangled into a mess taking the business down with her. I honestly felt a little sorry for that damn idiot. I told her to leave my house and that I would consider it and go to her on my own terms, only when if I wanted to come back. Now I'm stuck in a moral dilemma. Do I go back after the insult I faced? Do I help Tori out? Or do I let her flail and drown at the cost of my father's business? Any insights would be helpful. Okay, that's all for now. I'll keep you guys updated and have a nice day. Update number one. 
Hello guys, I'm back with another update. I know I said I was going to stay out of all the mess that Tori has made and how I wasn't going to obey her like a lapdog. But when she came to a me crying and begging, I was too blinded by anger to see this as a massive opportunity. And anyways, this company is my father and grandfather's remaining legacy. It's not okay for me to simply watch from the outside as it crashes and burns. Well, I do think that I do deserve ownership of the company, and I'm still sort of bitter about my father not letting me take the reins. I know that it's my responsibility to restore the company to its former glory and safeguard its reputation. As I kept getting updates and information about internal matters from Nala, who was acting on my word and decisions as a board member, I kept getting worried about the security and reputation for the company. I reached out to Tori a couple days ago, who was almost desperate and was letting Nala's father make most of the major decisions. Nala's father has a track record of getting personal in the name of business, not observing boundaries and doing literally whatever it takes to come out on top. It was that cutthroat attitude that made my father keep him on, uh, you know, just to run several departments. But I was initially worried that he might get a little too intense for Tori. I mean, Nala was obviously keeping a check and ensuring that he doesn't exploit Tori, but still. I had a conversation with Tori, which was mostly her spitting out venom at me and trying to just, uh, talk some sense into her. Still, she was desperate, and she was the one who came to me, so I knew she would succumb to my terms. I got to her to appoint me as interim CEO while she took a back seat for personal reasons. Of course, the lack of permanence got to me, but I was willing to take whatever I could get to ensure that well-being of my father's legacy. So while I was her stand-in, I reversed all her idiotic actions and I hired the head of design and development department, though I had to give her a raise and ensure job security with a severance package to last her a year without working. I'm really hoping we never have to fire her. Tori was seething when she found out I rehired her. Because of her huge spat on the pace of development for a new product to be launched. Well, I just flipped the bird to Tori and informed her that she had no right to fire someone that old and reputed over a tiny dispute. Tori just shrugged and told me to do what I must to keep everything afloat. While rehiring and mending relationships with integral employees was my first move as interim CEO. My second move was to fire the legal firm that we were working with. The way they sold out during the contract agreement of the partnership deal made under Tory's reign and gave maximum benefits to the other party rather than us while drafting the terms of the agreement, it made me realize we needed a better legal team. So, well, possibly one that could help me regain my power as the actual CEO. I hired a team of lawyers from another firm to safeguard our assets and help me resume my CEO position permanently. Things aren't really fully smoothed out yet, but things are looking up. I'm really hoping they'll be fine by next month. Okay, that's it for the update. Update number two. Hey guys, I'm here to post another update. The company's almost back to normal and running smooth. I've reassessed the terms of the partnership with the other party and they're more than willing to make it fair after I threatened them with legally endangering their company for bribing of the opposite party. Tori was being a tyrant and not letting me handle things my way. And she wasn't even paying me properly, so I simply consulted a lawyer and put forth the condition. I wanted 32% of the company shares from the 62% of what she was holding which gave me the majority of the shares and allowed the board of directors to be more involved in the decision-making process. She was protesting it at first, but I'd warned her. I'd back out that she could do it on her own if she didn't want to give me more than half her shares. Of course, she didn't fully understand the implications of her decision, so it was rather easier to exploit her and make sure the reins were in my hands. So... I got the shares almost free of cost after badgering her for a few days. So now I'm a majority shareholder in the company and I'm going to call a meeting soon with the board of directors to determine uh, via note whether to fire Tori and let me assume a permanent CEO position or to let Tori run the company. This was by the suggestion of my new legal team, which is genuinely doing great and securing my interest. 
Now, I may be the better candidate by a mile, but Tori still does have a major influence over the company. She can manipulate and make the board vote her way if I'm not careful enough. So, I'm sending Nala out to strengthen our relationship with the other directors and ensure their vote is on our side. So, she's been giving them incentives, taking them out to dinner with her family, and just actually listening to them for once. And basically just making sure they knew who to vote for. Well, Tori has no idea of the storm that's absolutely brewing, so she barely has time to prepare and get people on her side once I drop the bomb. I'm going to let everyone know of my situation, preferably in uh, the very next board meeting. And the odds are definitely in my favor. This woman wronged me. She lied to my father, disrupted my company, prevented me from having control, and made me lose my father even before he died. Now it's payback. Okay, guys, that's it for now. I'll update you soon. Have a splendid week. Update number three. Hey guys, I'm back with yet another update, and I have some great news. I announced in the board meeting about the vote-off, which received approving murmurs throughout the board. The very next week, we had a vote, and surprise, surprise, I won via a unanimous vote from the board. I had no doubt anyways. So, now my position as CEO is permanent, but that's not all. After the vote, there was one last thing that I had to do before I could rest easy. Remember the legal team that took bribes from the other party to sign an unfair agreement? Well, that was a legal activity they did behind Tori's back, but it wasn't the only illegal thing they helped in. And at that time, they'd join hands with Tori. So, Tori was embezzling money from our investors and clients, and this legal team was messing with the accounts, hiding all her theft and enabling her to get access to the assets. I would not have found out if I had not conducted an external audit to observe our accounts and find out where some of the money was flowing. All the things pointed to Tori, and the auditor confirmed it to me, so I marched to my house where Tori was at, and I showed her the accounts, and I accused her of embezzlement and told her to come clean. Well, initially, she would not budge. But it's pretty hard to deny cold hard facts, isn't it? Especially when you're backing them up with proof. So yeah, she admitted in the end that she put aside funds to buy a new house for her brother. Which is fine, but she put aside enough money for a mansion, so I didn't believe her. Anyways, it's not my responsibility to find out why she stole the money. It's my responsibility to fix the situation and perhaps use this as leverage. I decided that enough was enough. This woman took everything off my father without leaving anything much for my wife and me and our potential children. I told her to hand over ownership of the ancestral property, all her shares of the company, the cars, the heirlooms, to me immediately, and she could keep the money. I could probably make that amount of money in a year or two given the company's control. She was hesitant at first, not willing to give me what was rightfully mine, but I reminded her of the documents in my hand right now and how she could end up with an absolutely nothing if she didn't take this offer to let her run with the money. So, she signed it all away. She signed all the necessary documents the next day in front of a lawyer, giving me 62% shares of the company and giving me full ownership, baby. It was a win-win situation whether she signed it or not, but I'm glad she signed because that means I get to keep the house I grew up in, the cars I went to school in, and my beautiful wife could look even sparklier in some of the jewelry I saw my granny in. Call it blackmailing, but I'm not at all guilty about what I did. Okay, that's it, guys. I'm off to get everything in order and consolidate my assets as the owner of my company. Have a lovely day. As much as the comments throughout the post and the updates were hating on Tori, it seemed a lot of people kind of changed their tune when they found out that she died in a car accident, but that doesn't take away all the wrong things that she did to OP. And like I said, the comment section was not forgiving of her, even though she's passed on now. I do want to know your thoughts about today's stories, your thoughts about the drug planting and having OP basically kicked out of the house and removed from the will. The only problem I have with this story is, why wasn't the father more open and understanding to the fact that maybe, just maybe, OP was actually set up? They didn't really go too far into that. I mean... If I was in that position and OP said, 
I'll take a drug test, I promise I've never done anything like that. It was just weird that they flipped to, oh, well, he must be selling the drugs instead of taking them. Anyways, I want to know your thoughts about that, guys, in the comment section down below. My name's Mr. Reddito. I narrate stories like this every single day. So don't miss out on any upcoming drama stories by clicking that subscribe button with the bell notifications on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.